Probability is not a large topic on the SAT, but it's one that you can master because many of the questions are easy and the ones that are hard are hard in the same way. In fact, there's really just one twist that makes probability difficult, and it's very predictable. But before we get to that twist, the most important rule for probability is to start with a fraction. The top number, or numerator, will be the outcomes that we want, and the bottom number, or denominator, will be all the possible outcomes for a situation. Let's look at a simple example of flipping heads on a fair coin. I recommend starting every probability question with the denominator, since it's usually easier to understand. We know that there are two sides to a coin, one heads and one tails, so there are two possible outcomes. We want the one heads, so that's the numerator. Simplifying, we get the probability of flipping heads is one half, or one over two. Let's look at another example. What is the probability of rolling a three on a six-sided die? Once again, we should start with a fraction and focus on the denominator. There are six total sides to the die. The numerator is one because there is only one three on the die. It's important that you don't confuse the values on the sides of the die with the probability of rolling one of those values. As you can see, the probability of rolling a three is one sixth. Sometimes you'll need to express probability as a decimal or a percentage. It's easy to find the decimal if you start with the fraction, because you can just divide the numerator and denominator in a calculator. In this case, 1 divided by 6 is 0 0.16 repeating. Turning a decimal into a percentage is just a matter of multiplying by 100. In this case, 0 0.16 times 100 is 16.6 .6 repeating percent. In other cases, you might be asked to simplify a fraction, but regardless, if you start with a simple fraction of the outcomes that you want over all possible outcomes, you will always get a version of the probability that you can use to solve that question. There are a few more probability concepts that are worth knowing. First, remember that the maximum probability for every situation is always equal to 1. With the case of a coin, the probability of flipping heads is 1 half, and the probability of flipping tails is also 1 half. There are no other outcomes. If you add those probabilities together, you get 2 over 2, which is equal to 1. Related to this idea is the word complement, which we can use when the probability that we want is annoying to find. It might be easier to find the probability of outcomes that we don't want and subtract it from 1. In the case of a six-sided die, the probability of rolling a multiple of three is two-sixths because only three and six are multiples of three. If we wanted the probability of rolling a number that is not a multiple of three, we could just count the remaining sides of the die. There are four numbers that are not divisible by three, so that probability is four-sixths. But we could have found this by subtracting two-sixths from one. Notice that two-sixths and four-sixths equals one because there are no other outcomes. Every number is either a multiple of 3 or not a multiple of 3. These are mutually exclusive events. Probability questions get kind of annoying and difficult if we need to combine outcomes. It's likely that we'll be given a chart that shows the number of times that each outcome happens. Usually, we will add multiple values in the numerator to capture all the outcomes that we want. For example, to find the probability that a student has a cat, we should again start with a fraction and focus on the denominator first. The total outcomes is all of the students that are in the chart, so we can add the four numbers 3 plus 5 plus 14 plus 11. Then we should find all of the students who have a cat. There are three people who have a cat and a dog, and five people who have a cat but no dog. There are two outcomes that we want, so we're adding those numbers in the numerator. The final probability would be 8 over 33. But sometimes the SAT asks for a conditional probability, where the number of possible outcomes is limited by the question. In this case, we're looking for the probability that a student has a cat, given that they have a dog. In other words, the denominator should only focus on the students who have a dog, which would be 3 plus 14. We completely ignore the bottom row because the question is telling us to focus only on students who have a dog. Then, we're looking for the students who have a cat within that initial group, so the only value we want is the three students who have both a cat and a dog. Again, we're ignoring the students who don't have a dog, even though five of them have a cat, because they are not part of the initial group. The condition forces us to exclude some of the students. The digital SAT won't let you write on the chart directly, but you should think of finding a conditional probability in this way, where you have a large circle for the denominator and a smaller circle inside of it for the numerator. In this case, the final probability would be 3 out of 17. Notice that we're talking about fewer students than the 33 we had in the previous question. In this next example, I've changed the question very slightly, but it will completely change the answer. In this case, we're looking for the probability that a student who has a cat also has a dog. This time, the denominator is limited to people who have a cat, which is a total of 3 plus 5. The numerator stays the same because we're still looking for a student who has both a cat and a dog. Notice that once again, we have a large circle for the denominator and a smaller circle inside of it for the numerator. The overall probability would be 3 eighths. If you're confused, that's okay. This is a confusing idea. 
I recommend rewinding this video and comparing the previous example to this one until you understand how the slight change in the wording of the question affects where we look in the chart for the denominator and the final probability. If you can master conditional probability, you are likely going to get every single probability question right on your SAT. Let's review the main ideas for probability. First, remember that most probabilities should start with a fraction. Start with the denominator of the fraction, which is all the possible outcomes. The numerator of the fraction should just be the outcomes that you want. If the question asks for a probability as a decimal or percent, you can just divide the fraction to form the decimal and then multiply by 100 to find the percent. Remember that the maximum probability for any situation will always be 1, and if it's difficult to find the probability that you're looking for, it might be easier to use the complement to find the probability of your outcome not happening, then subtract that number from 1. And for the most difficult probability questions, the most important strategy will always be to read carefully. Two questions might sound very similar, but produce very different answers. And you can bet that if the question is multiple choice, the answer you would get if you misread the question will be there as a trap. I highly recommend rereading probability questions multiple times because just one word can completely change your answer. Luckily, if these conditional probability questions confuse you, there are not going to be very many of them on your SAT. But there is very little math involved in these questions, so if you can read carefully, you can save all of these points.